Hello, I'm Tarek Maryface and welcome to this new video. Today, we're going to look at the basic instrument scans. Now before we start, you might be wondering, glass cockpit or steam gauges? The answer is, it doesn't really matter. Each have their own advantages. Personally, I prefer glass cockpit, because it comes with a wide range of extra tools. Additionally, it's a lot easier to fly more accurately. For example, look at the pitch on the PFD versus the attitude indicator. Because of the large screen, it's a lot easier to fly more accurately. That being said, the skills are completely transferable. Even the scans have the same shape. So I'll be showing you the scans for both cockpit types, just to further prove the point. Whatever scan you do, you always start at the attitude indicator and you go back to it. You should spend one to three seconds on each instrument, but three to five seconds on the attitude indicator. The T-scan starts at the attitude indicator, then goes left, right, or down. So attitude, airspeed, attitude, altitude, attitude, heading. And then we repeat. The T-scan is great to make sure that the performance doesn't change. However, to ensure that the attitude and power is still relevant, you should throw in some of the other instruments every now and again. That's when the radial scan comes in. It will come in intermittently with the T-scan. In this case, all we're doing is adding a few other instruments. It will be the turn indicator, making sure you're doing a rate one turn when turning or a zero rate when not turning, and the VSI to make sure that you're not climbing or descending. You may also hear this scan be referred to as the hub and spoke scan. Before we start looking at turns, let's figure out how much we should bank. There's a formula, 10% of the airspeed plus seven. So if you're flying at 100 knots, it's a bank angle of 17 degrees. Now there's no 17 degrees marker on the attitude indicator, so let's just round it up to 20 and it'll be slightly above rate one but well within limits. During a turn, we alternate between the T-scan and the V-scan. The V-scan starts at the AI, goes down to the turn coordinator, back to the AI, then to the VSI. This way we can ensure we're turning at a constant rate and at a constant vertical speed, whether that be in a climb, a descent, or level flight. A great exercise to practice these scans is the figure of eight flight pattern. You can find it on the screen now, so you can take a screenshot. But if you want to find more details about the scans, the exercise, and other similar exercises that will help you with your instrument flight, why don't you go ahead and check out my book, The Flight Simmer's Guide to Prepping for Instrument Training. In this book, you can find a bunch of exercises that will help you develop a solid instrument scan and a very solid foundation for good instrument flying. The exercises are completely based on my experience as a flight instructor, but also more importantly, on peer-reviewed research papers. I've poured through the scientific data to figure out the best way to use our home simulators in order to prepare us for instrument training in the real world. Yes, this is a shameless plug, but I'd really appreciate it if you would go at least have a look at the book on Amazon. But that's it for now. I'm Tarek Maryface. I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.